Hey, how you doing? Norm Stockton here with Michael Tobias, luthier extraordinaire, and uh, the MTD J5 number two. Yep. And uh, what's the what's the basic scoop with this? The fact that you called and said Lincoln wanted you to use a jazz bass instead of the other one frustrated me because <laughs> Andrew Boucher had called and said Chaco wanted him to do the same thing the day before. I was like. Okay, I'm done. I'll just build you something that works. And that was the idea. Yeah, most of you know that uh, my 535 number 252 is my main base, and it's phenomenal. I'm, it's been my main base since 1997 when I got it, and I'll tell you about that in a different blog. But um, for the stuff that I'm doing these days with, uh, with Lincoln Brewster, it, it's just really, you know, it's rock. There's layers of guitar, and the bass needs to sit in a really specific place in the mix. And uh, we were messing around, and and uh, this other type of bass was just working much better in the mix. And so uh, I talked to Michael, and I was asking him actually, I was asking if you could uh, maybe doctor up my other 535 yeah. to make it work. And you, I think you said something along the lines of it would be easier to retrofit Carly, my 12 year old, that <laughs> um, <laughs> it would be it, that bass. It, 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 she'd probably sit still longer. <laughs> the. Uh, the thing about these is they have less dynamic range than the other bases, and they sit in a more focused position in the mix, which is what you needed, yeah. rather than to have something with so much range in it that you couldn't. I think you could you said it. like smaller sonic footprint kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, much smaller yeah. and less real estate. So that was the deal, and it looks retro enough to satisfy people who want something to look that way. Yeah, uh, it's not a copy, but it's certainly obvious where it came from. So uh, what's, from a construction standpoint, what's going on here? It's a two-piece ash body with an ash neck and maple board. And the ash neck is um, certainly not traditional, but it gives the bass a more raw and aggressive voice. And surprisingly, a maple board on an ash neck opens up the bottom. Rather than making it too bright, it makes the bottom warmer. A harder, a harder board, like an ebony board on an ash neck, I think is very harsh. Yeah. And would be overpowering. But that, seemed, that combination seems to work really well. And what's up with the Barts? Those are a special winding for the deepest voice you can get out of a J bass pickup. And it's not, um, they're not as bright as they could be, but they don't need to be given the wood combination. And the preamp goes back towards the old TCT, which is something that hasn't been made in a long time. And it's got a very clear present voice, but it's also not wide ranging. So you can get a very focused sound out of it without getting too out of whack. Yeah. I've uh, used this on pretty much every track on Lincoln Brewster's upcoming CD, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. It's, I'm really digging how it sounds and uh, how it works for this style of music. So the MTD J5, um, any word yet on when they're going to be in production? or? Is that still uh, up in the air? It's still up in the air. I've made about six more of them. And they're, right now they're handmade, though, so yeah. right now they're... They're almost as expensive as a regular bass, unfortunately, and that wasn't my goal. Um, however, we are making samples to send out to see about getting them made finally, so hopefully by the end of the year we'll have that sorted out. Okay, so the blog and probably mtdbase.com will have yes. updated information on that stuff. So. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.